Today, our champion, Dick O'Connell of Abington, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Charlie Jukris of Agawam, Massachusetts, on Hamilton Bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Candleton Bowling. Sure glad you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candleton Bowling. Total pinfall determining our winner. Each will take home a permanent souvenir from the Ace Trophy Company of Austin. Obviously, the larger one will go to the champion, the other to today's runner-up. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. $700 of that will go to the winner. $350 will go to the runner-up. $50 available to the winner of each string. Other opportunities for them to make money you're familiar with, but I'll remind you as the program goes along, I have these three gift certificates. One is to the March of the Day. That's $50 from True Value uh, Home Centers and Hardware Stores. That goes to the bowler who has the most marks. Then I have $50 gift certificates, four of them, for men's clothing from Eastern Clothing Company of Watertown. There'll be a $50 gift certificate to the winner of each string and also a $50 gift certificate for the runner-up. There will also be a $50 gift certificate from Super 7 Tire Dealers, and that will go to today's runner-up. All right, let's talk to today's bowlers, shall we? <laughs> Charlie Jutras, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm teasing you a little bit because you don't change. Do you realize that you and I were on this program the first time when you came 30 years ago? We both started, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about that? Right. April 4th in 1959, yeah. and the program was already six months old at that time. Yeah. Uh, you also took me bass fishing one day. Oh, Are you, you're still participating in some of those things? Yeah, you get all wet, remember? Yeah, yeah. I do remember, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't do it nearly as well as you did either. No. Mr. O'Connell is rolling along here, and uh, each week he just makes it par for the course to go at least 400, right? Well, hey, I've, I've been bowling good the last couple of weeks over here. But you want to go at least 427, don't you? That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I know it is, but, uh, you know, obviously right now you're hanging in there as an uh, alternate, one pin behind, huh? Hopefully I'll get up there. I don't doubt that you probably will. Okay, it should be a great match. You're two fine bowlers. You used to watch him when you were a kid, right? Oh, yeah, I used to idolize him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good luck to you. Good luck to you, Charles. We'll get underway right after this. And right now, Charlie Jutris, today's challenger. Right now, he has a league average of 121. And they are falling for him. He's left with a 1 and 2 as a spare lead. Good way to start. Charlie's high single, 203. High triple, 485. Roll off, 671. Representing the Westfield Bowling Center. Very close to getting a strike as the fill. This, by the way, for Charlie, is his 49th appearance on our program. So Charlie begins with a pair of spares. Our defending champion, Dick O'Connell, going for his fourth in a row. Half Worcester, right side. His average, 126. That's pretty typical of Dick O'Connell. Doesn't really seem to matter what is left after the first ball. He seems to be able to convert anything from one to nine. One, three, five, eight, nine. <laughs> Left one, the eighth. Nine. 
Charlie Jutras, who's employed as an assembler. And uh, he really is a very dedicated bass fisherman, and he makes a lot of money at it. He is a tournament bass fisherman. Got a backdoor spare, so he begins with $50 in bonus money. The fill is six. It's a split. He has three pins over on the left. Four, seven, and eight, and over on the right to ten. Two pieces of wood in between. And it finally did fall. A little extra English. <laughs> so four marks in a row for Charlie Jutras to begin. Defending champion Dick O'Connell. Two, four, seven on the left, ten on the right, and a piece of wood to the right side of the number ten. Sort of beautiful shot to a lovely spare. Close to loading up with a strike. Nine pin drop. One more. He has it. Seven marks out of the, the eight boxes that we have seen so far, and each bowler will have a bonus ball to throw. When we come back, right now in completed boxes, it is Jutras 51 and O'Connell 43. The coast of Maine. Charlie Jutras on the line for the fifth box. He's had nothing but marks so far. Another nine pin drop. There you see two pieces of wood alongside the only pin still standing, and they turned out to be a roadblock, and it prevented him from having five marks in a row. Charlie is the father of four. He winds up now with four horsemen left side and in the opposite corner, the 10 pin. Last appearance on our show was in November 84. Chopped wood here, he lost to uh, Hawk Hallis at that time. It's an eight. Our defending champion, Dick O'Connell, he is an electrician. And he's the father of two. Strike. And he has three marks in a row. Two strikes. 
strikes in a row, and he has $100 in bonus money, and when he comes back, he'll be trying for three strikes in a row and an additional bonus of $1,000. Charlie Jukras has the one, six, seven, eight, ten. Two pieces of wood. Had to hit the head pin and didn't. Seven box. No wood to help, working on two, four, seven, and nine. Six, excuse me. An eight. All right, Dick O'Connell has two strikes in a row. That's all I need to say. Because if he throws another one, it's worth a thousand dollars. He has four in a row, and it is still alive. That has been done only twice. George Raymond, Jim Barber. But he's still alive to go for another. And Charlie picks up. A spare here. His bonus. He punches out on the right side, a half Worcester. Now the other side. Seven. Now Dick O'Connell comes up with the opportunity to do what no one has ever done in the 30 plus years of the program, and that is to have five strikes in a row. No. So it remains. Jim Barber, George Raymond, and now Dick O'Connell as the only bowlers in the 31 and a half years of our program to have four in a row. And he makes a spare out of it. Seven is the fill here. 184.
And of course, Ed Zernike has our high single of 197, and that's a 194, which for the sake of one pin could have been a spare, and he could have broken it. Maybe we would have had our first 200. Anyway, the score at the end of one is Dick O'Connell, 194, Charlie Judas, 122. After a sensational opening string of 194, our defending champion has cooled off a little bit. O'Connell has a 10 and a 9 for 19 as he awaits Charlie Jutras. Charlie Jutras right now, after starting off with four marks in a row himself and just missing five in a row, then was able to get one more and get just a two on it as he sat and watched Dick O'Connell. Dick O'Connell is now in second place behind Ed Zernike for men's high single. And this is a program, folks, that's been on the air steady at the same time since October 4th of 1958. Over 30 years. All right, six is the fill, and he's faced with diamond left. In case you'd like to know how many others are in the 190 category. Is it going to go? Yes. Sort of a roundabout way of getting it. <laughs> he says, I'll take it. <laughs> Zernike 197, O'Connell 194, Jim Barber and Dan Lasco, each with 191, and Pete Iannuzzo with a 190. Now, Dick O'Connell. He's left with a seven pin to convert for a spare. <laughs> Waiting for Wood to settle down. And while we're waiting, I can run over those who have gone 180 or better. Wally Bozinski, 189. Jim Kelly and Tom Osta, 186. Tom Senemi and Fred Spintig, 182. And Tom Osta, 181. Yes, of course, from the applause, you know that the spare was made. The women's high single. Paula Boulette has both of them. 157, 156. Stacia Zernike next with a 155. Then Tony Marie Baldinelli, twice over 150, 150 and 152, and Shelley Carr, 150. Right. Two full on the head pin. It's an eight. Charlie Jutras has begun the middle string as he did the first with a pair of spares. It's gonna to be tough to make it three in a row. Two four six ten. Too far left. Had to brush that two pin to kick it over to get the six and ten. A nine. One and nine, still standing. So Charlie has three marks in the first four boxes, and once again, we'll take a check on the scoreboard. With Charlie Jutras having another bonus ball to roll, the score right now after four is Jutras 51, 
and O'Connell Connell, our defending champion on the line. We are at the halfway point. Big hit, everything down except the four pin. spare all over it he leaves the four horsemen right side as he picks up six Missed it by one. And he has it. Charlie Jutras coming up. He has three marks in the first four boxes. He's working on one of those right now. This will be the bonus ball. Six. He's left with uh, let's see, a piece of wood just came up against the five. So he has three, five, eight, excuse me, three, five, nine, and ten. And he made it. So Charlie has, again, two marks in a row. And would have had five in a row, except that in the third, he had a nine. of pieces of wood forming a V out where number one would be. Charlie got the left side, but not the right, so no more bonus money. Plenty of, plenty of marks up on the board. And the crew that's watching this exciting event today, Dick Erickson, Joe Sukar, Roger Rice, Skip Peabody, our producer director, of course, Mr. Phil Rubin. Our scorekeepers on the electric scoreboard, electronic, I should say, Al Giglio and Keith Williams on the big board here. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. There's Ralph Stewart, our love line judge and referee. And incidentally, I have something that I want to pass along to Al Larkin of Wareham regarding Ralph. Oh, what a great effort. Al Wrightson says, as a retired shipfitter from the Boston Naval Shipyard, a bowler in the Shipyard League, and a fan of your show for about 100 years, I'm either losing my grip or reality, or my eyes are playing tricks, but I keep seeing ghosts of old buddies from the yard in your gallery every week. I don't know why I should feel that I'm the only survivor of that era, so if you have a minute, could you ask if any of those bald eagles in the back row labored long and hard with me in Charlestown for many years? Well, I'd like you to know, Al, that our own Ralph Stewart was a ship fitter in Charlestown at the Navy Yard for 20 years on the midnight shift, and he was the guy who put together the uh, bowling league. So I asked him about some of the guys in the background. He has not recognized any of them. So maybe it was a different shift. He was on the midnight shift. It's an eight. Now our challenger, Charlie Jutras. Is it going to be? It is. A strike. So that puts Charlie at 94. 
with two bonus balls to roll. And in the first string, he was at 95 at that particular point through seven. Six. Another side saddle triangle. This time it's made up of the two, five, eight, and over in the corner is the seven. As soon as he released it, he knew he had held the ball too long. And it went towards the seven instead of going to the target he wanted, which was the two pin. Nine. Dick O'Connell, who had a super 194 opening string. If you just joined us, I'm sorry you missed it. Because he also had four strikes in a row and picked up $2,000 in bonus money. Besides, another 300. A nine, that brings him to 94. Right, Tough split. As the ball came back and did sidewall action, it came across from right to left, bounced off the sidewall, and took down the seven pin. And here's where he wants a big, fat fill to make that third string a little more comfortable as he's trying to go. He got seven. One eleven. Now, Charlie Jufus. Get over, get over. And today's challenger has the seven pin to pick up for another mark. All right, Charlie. Charlie has had two in a row to begin, then a nine, then two more, then a 10, then a strike, then a nine box. Now another mark. If he could have put them together, have himself a little bonus money. Right now he's working on a diamond. That's the spare leave he has. Left side diamond. Nope, diamond wins again. What he had was two, four, five, and eight. And the four is still there. Now it's gone. A fine 136. Dick O'Connell won the first. Got $50 and a $50 gift certificate from Eastern Clothing, for men's clothing. And now it's the turn of Charlie Jutras, who picks up $50 for winning the middle string and also gets a $50 gift certificate for men's clothing from Eastern Clothing Company of Watertown. And the score after two. Defending champion Dick O'Connell, 305. Challenger Charlie Jutras, 258. I Third said, string. Oh, Half Worcester right side, punching out three and nine.
One, five, six, and ten still there. And they're still there, so it's a six box. Spare. That was the two, five, seven, and eight. Dick wants to qualify for our championship show. And he needs a one seventeen. Actually, a one sixteen would. Uh, no, he needs a 121 to tie. And he needs a 122 in order to uh, move into fifth place. I'm sure he was a bit disappointed in his middle string of 111. But it had to be a letdown after a 194 opening string and having four strikes in a row. As most of you know, he has been the winner the last two years of the $10,000 first prize in our championship True Value show in which the five top bowlers, that is the five bowlers with the highest three string total, since the previous program will participate. Our home viewer jackpot is uh, starting at 50 because we had a $700 winner last week. Our high-low jackpot is still climbing at the 325. If you want to get in that home viewer jackpot, remember, we're asking you to put on a postcard, not a letter, your guess as to what the total pinfall would be both bowlers combined on a day you hope I draw your card. And we'll give you 10 pins either side. If it's within that uh, range, you will be the winner and we'll get whatever, whatever has accumulated in the jackpot. But even if you're nowhere near it, just the fact that I draw your card, you will be rewarded with several prizes. Just send that card along to Candleton Bowling, WCVB TV, 5 TV Place, Needham, Massachusetts, zip code number 02192. Once again, Charlie punching out on the right side and having some trouble with that half Worcester. Seven box. Four, seven on the left, six on the right. to get the marks coming. He needs that 122. Oddly enough, despite the fact that uh, Dick O'Connell had eight marks in the first string. 
Nope, didn't get it. And leads in the match by 46 pins. His challenger, Charlie Jukers, has one more mark than he. Now, six boxes to go. Three pins over on the right-hand side to try to convert. Three, six, ten. Nope. Missed the three. We don't know who next week's challenger will be because that roll-off has not been held as we are doing this program. And somebody, I, I, I guess we kind of think that everybody knows how the bowlers get on here, but every once in a while, somebody says, how do they get on? I mean, how do, how do they qualify? Well, you enter at your own local lanes and say you want to be in a roll-off, a TV roll-off, and then the, usually the top three from maybe six or seven little or more lanes will be at a TV final. There may be as many as uh, 60 or more bowlers there. And they go head to head, and the only one who comes here is the one who wins that roll off. So it's tough. He's getting tough splits. And he wants marks. Now he's down to five boxes. A nine. going for the 1-3 uh, pocket, and then there was just enough rotation on it to take it too full onto the head pin, and he winds up with another split. Got the right side. Got one of them. Nine. Two tens and three nines so far, uh, and uh, excuse me, four nines, and four boxes left. Charlie Jutras gets a nine pin drop as a fill on his spare and a chance for another as he faces a six pin by itself. Little body English on that one. But he's got a, a pair of spares here. Seven. And a triangle to work on, and we know this is not easy. It's a three, five, and six. He made it. So he's got three in a row. And another $50 in bonus money for Charlie Jutras. Dick O'Connell down to four boxes in his quest of a 122 or better. Now a spare leave, as long as that piece of wood does not become a roadblock. There is his first mark. And remember, 
What he wants is 122 or better. Spread Eagle as he gets a four. Boy, that has to be frustrating. An eight. Seventy-eight. Charlie's bonus streak stops there. As he rolls a seven. bonus balls to throw for Charlie. Two full on the head pin. There are four pins still standing. Dick O'Connell, his final two boxes. Did not fall the way he wanted it to, so he winds up with a 7-10 split. Nope, wasn't to be. One pin standing to 10. Now he's at 88. He needs seven pins for 400. But what he wanted, obviously, was a 427. Now he gets the strike, is what he says. 98. He has 400 again. Charlie Jutras is the winner of the third string, but of course the winner of the match is Dick O'Connell by a final score of 412 to 379. Hey, what a first string, huh? Wow, I want to tell you, that was really exciting. Well, you know we had a winner last week, so there's just $50 in here, but that also means there are more chances for somebody to win. And the total today is 791, which means anywhere from 801 to 781 would win that $50. But anyway, when I draw a card, you'll be happy because you will get these prizes. A weed eater gas-powered lawn trimmer, the perfect tool for a well-groomed yard. 
Each offers excellent maneuverability and balance for trimming, mowing, edging, and reaching tight spots with minimal operator fatigue. Weed Eater and Stetson Cologne, that great masculine scent that's comfortable and easy for a man to wear, hard for a woman to resist. Stetson Fits and Rand McNally's Road Atlas and Vacation Guide combines its completely updated 1989 Road Atlas, United States, Canada, and Mexico, with a collection of vacation planning information. All right, let's see whether we have a $50 winner or not. Anywhere from 781 to 801. And uh, this is R.W. Belanger, Post Office Box 77, Seabrook, New Hampshire. The guess is 745, so next week this will be worth 100. Hilo jackpot right now worth $325. So once again, Dick O'Connell gets a crack at it. Almost. Charlie. You made him dance a little bit. Okay, Charlie, if you come here and Dick will... No, right over here, please. I want the folks to see how well-preserved you are after all these years. <laughs> well, you, you started off like a house of fire, huh? That... I was a little lucky. I wasn't throwing the good ball at all. I was just dropping it and my timing was bad, but... I'm happy to be here. Hey, listen, you did all right. And uh, you did pretty well financially, too, because you picked up $250 in bonus money, $350 for being our runner-up. You also got three $50 certificates wow. from uh, Eastern Clothing Company for men's clothing, winning the second, third, and being the runner-up. $50 gift certificate from Super 7 Tire Dealers for being the runner-up. And you had more marks than he did, despite the fact that... Uh, yeah, he has the biggies. Yeah, right. yeah, really. 16 to 13. Of course, he had the biggies. So you get a $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Store. Don't stay away so long, will you? Right. Come back and see us again. All right. All right, Richard. Wonderful first thing. Uh, the only thing is it, it made you feel as if now, today, I'm going to make it, right? You figured you'd well, have your 427 or better? I had a good shot at it. I just started leaving the two ones all the time. That's I Once know. you get in that run, it's tough to get out. Oh, I know. It's, it's, but it was exciting and wonderful. And of course, you're only the third guy ever in 31 and uh, almost 31 years to ever put four in a row together. And that totals out to 700 for winning and $2,400 in bonus money. And a nice little one to put up on the shelf here. Maybe put an asterisk on that, but today you got that. Don't know who your opponent's going to be, but I know you'll be back here to roll another 400 next week. Looking forward. Okay. God get us for the whole crew. We'll be here. You'll be here, too. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody.